Hi, welcome back to Fantasy Premier League Game Week 4 post-reaction and post-results from the game week. So I apologise, I wasn't able to get any Fantasy Premier League content out for this coming week that's just gone. Uh, I had to sort some other bits and bobs out, but I should be back to normal now. So in this game week in general, it was a pleasant surprise compared to last game week and the game week before. Last game week I got about 30 points, game week before I got about 40 something. They were quite rough for me and I was getting under the average points. So finally it's nice, it's a nice change to be in this position. So if we scroll down to look at the team piece by piece. So the goalkeeper, Martinez. Now the Aston Villa game versus Liverpool, the last match of the game week was really entertaining. Now I don't support any of the teams who were playing so I was watching it as a neutral fan you're going to call it something like that neutral viewer and it was really entertaining the amount of goals scored it was hard to believe every time the ball kept going up the pitch I kept thinking not another one surely and you know if if you count the near misses as well and potential chances it could have been 11-2 no joke so the actual goalkeeper Martinez unfortunately didn't keep a clean sheet but I'm not concerned i'm not bothered because at the end of the day they were facing liverpool and although liverpool probably obviously weren't as good as they normally are liverpool still managed to get the odd goal in because of seller so yeah however martinez did get an extra point because of the saves he made six which is really good so that's two points it's one point for every three saves so that really good happy with that now in terms of the defense I was actually quite happy with that as well. Now, Justin, not really bothered about. Uh, he didn't do much, obviously. Now, he would have got two points if he didn't concede that many. And the only other points he probably would have got was a clean sheet because obviously he didn't score, didn't get any assist. But he's a cheap player, not an issue. Robertson, yes, minus one point. I'm not mithered because it's a player I know that will do well most of the time. This was just a rough patch. So that's not the end of the world. Now, it was nice to see Sice and Samedu doubling up and finally getting in the points. Now, Sice did get bonus points. That's why he got two more points than Samedu. But that's not a problem. Samedu oh, only played 77 minutes. But then again, he is new. This is his second match. So he's probably just getting used to it, getting the fitness up. You know, in the first game week, I don't think he really played as much. I might be wrong. But yeah. Once he starts settling more, he might perform better. Now, I don't know if he's a midfielder in real life. The only reason why I'm saying that is because when I kept looking at team sheets, it kept showing him in the midfield role rather than a fullback. Might be wrong, but that's just what I've seen. But nevertheless, he should be able to score maybe the odd goal. Probably can get an, an assist here and there. Now, coming up to the key part of the midfield. Bear in mind... I got rid of Son thinking he wasn't going to play. And once again, I was tricked. This is the problem with fantasy football. Now, I know I might have not looked all over the place and I didn't look at every single press conference and all that. There's only so much you can look at and there's only so much you can remember. And unfortunately, fantasy football doesn't update whether the player is injured or not. You know, even during the game week when Son was actually playing, it, it still said 25% chance of uh, playing. So the chances were low. Now, I can imagine people may have had him still in their teams, but maybe not as many playing Son. They might have had him on the bench, and some might have used the bench booster in hopes of him playing. I don't think many would have had him as captain. They might have had him, more likely people had him still in the teams, but not as captain. So it's not a great loss. Now, Son managed to get, what was it, 14 to 16, uh, probably, probably maximum 18 maybe points. Well, I brought in James Rodriguez. You know, normally I would do my update video of transfers made. Wasn't able to. But I brought in James Rodriguez. And for once, it traded off well. So, James Rodriguez, 18 points, 2 goals, 1 assist. Really, really good. It's good to watch him play. I was able to watch the match. And he just, he just performed. Simple as. The whole Everton team are doing quite nice. One thing to take in consideration is obviously they'll be facing Liverpool next, which will be difficult. Depends how Liverpool performs and what their tactics are, because I'm sure they're going to learn quick from uh, that game against Villa. So if we just look on the left and right hand side. Foden, unfortunately, got two points and 
unfortunately, once again, I'm still not good at selecting the captain roles. De Bruyne only managed to get two points. Had him as captain so far. Would have been really good to have Rodriguez as captain. But I'm not too bothered in that area because even before this, I would have never have thought of having James Rodriguez as captain. I know Rodriguez's uh, performance has been good so far, but I just don't trust him as a captain. That's just my personal opinion. I think the only other player who I probably would have had as captain is Calvert-Lewin. Uh, just because Calvert-Lewin seems more consistent. Just a personal opinion, though. Now, in terms of uh, the, def uh, the bench, James did not play, so I chose that correctly, not playing him. I was actually thinking of using the bench booster. I'm glad I didn't, because look, Costa and Grissa only got two points each. James got zero, and obviously Nyland doesn't play. So it would have been a waste of a booster. So that was one correct move for once, not activating it. The other correct move was bringing in Rodriguez. You know, he's cheaper than Son, and he's getting uh, the same amount of points, if not more, than Son. So it's not a loss. Up front, once again, Calvert-Lewin, yet again, consistent. You know, it's just it's just a comfortable, nice player to have. Now, I don't know how much he cost. What is it, 7.7 .7 million, somewhere around that? I got him originally for 7.3, I think. So that's quite good. That's really good to see. Um, Kane, 16 points. Really good, yet again. You know, the Kane-Son type duo. Basically, it was like that, um, was it the Brighton game or something? I can't remember. Or was it the Southampton one where they won 5-2? Whichever match that was, you know. It kind of replicated again against the likes of United. So nice to see Kane getting in and assist again and even scoring two goals, which is really good. Uh, Werner, shambles. <laughs> I don't like Werner, but I don't know who I'm going to get rid of. Obviously, I'll do an update video in the coming week to explain who I'm thinking of getting. I might do a watch list. That depends because I'm not... I'm not that good when it comes to predicting things. That's why I'm trying to lay off that area for now, okay? But it's going to be between Werner, Foden, and that's probably about it. I'm still going to keep De Bruyne just simply because he is a good player. Uh, City just haven't you know, really been at it at the moment. It would be a waste to get rid of De Bruyne right now. Unless I was to replace De Bruyne temporary for Salah or someone of equal quality. It all depends um, of uh, the amount of length of time I have a certain player for and whether their price changes or not. Because at the moment, Werner, I got him for 9.5. That was his original price. Then he dropped to 9.4. Now he's 9.3. If I sell him now, I get 9.4 million or so, I think. Or 9.3. Whichever way it is. And I've just got enough to afford Vardy. 10.7, which what leaves me with 0.5 or something. Something around that. For now, I can afford Vardy. But if Werner keeps on dropping hard, we're going to have a problem. And it's 17th of October, so it's not this coming Saturday where they'll be playing. It'll be the week after, I believe, if I'm not wrong. So that means there's even longer now till the next game week. So what happens if more people make changes? Is his price going to just keep going lower and lower? I mean, that's the problem. If I was to get rid of Werner... It'll be interesting to see who I can replace him with. And equally, if I was to get rid of a midfielder, let's say Foden, who could I replace him with? Because I guess Foden's a good player, but, you know, he's just not got the points since. You know, in the first game week he played, he got nine points ever since he's just been getting two. So that's been disappointing. Equally, the same with De Bruyne, I think, for the most part of it. So we'll see what happens next. These are the fixtures. Everton, Liverpool, Chelsea, Southampton, Leicester, Villa, Newcastle, United, Sheffield, Fulham, West Brom, Burnley, City, Arsenal. Yeah, basically they seem really interesting games. Now, last thing, just to rule it all off from at the moment now, after hearing about the transfer news about United and all that stuff. So they've got Tellez, they've got Cavani, obviously they've got Van der Beek. Um, and then they've got two right wingers or so, 18 year olds or something, 25 and 30 million, something like that. 
I mean, I don't know why they need two right wingers. I mean, if they're also getting Dembele, which they're still talking about, if they manage to get Dembele as well, then why do they need three right wingers? Isn't that a waste, surely? I mean, they could have got Dembe if they're getting Dembele, Dembele, get Dembele, right winger, but then get two defenders. But they failed again. Obviously, what people have already said is it's rushed last minute transfers. The plans change. There's no like real script, so it's kind of uncoordinated and a bit messy, and that can lead to panic buying. And we've seen that with Falcao. We've seen it with some others, and obviously the flot. So uh, Cavani, I mean, it's good to see him in the Premier League. You know, I've always wanted him to be in the Premier League. I mean, like like with Zlatan, he came and he did well. Uh, you you got Bale back as well, uh, so it's good to see all these players coming in. James Rodriguez as well from big clubs originally. And so on. And it might revive their careers. It might revive their performance. Who knows? It depends. Depends if they can keep up with the pace of the Premier League. It's quite competitive, obviously. Uh, the way I see it, I, I lean more towards Cavani being a foul cow 2.0. If I'm wrong, he could be like an Ibrahimovic 2.0 in terms of the 2016 transfer when he came in. Now, obviously, the big difference is uh, Zlatan was a free transfer, whereas Cavani was a 20 million transfer, I believe with a fairly high wage as well. So you kind of expect more from Cavani, because if he underperforms, he's not worth that money. Now, Tellez, um, well, he's a defender, so I guess that's good, better than nothing. Was he a left-back or a right-back, one of them? Is that to replace Juan Bissaka or Luke Shaw, whichever one? But I think it's uh, specifically Maguire and Lindelof that need to be um, inspected and changed. They're some of the key problems. I know uh, left back and right back are, aren't great either, but Luke Shaw at least, I've seen him at times where he's pushing up and he's trying at least. Wamba Saka, like uh, <laughs> one of the persons quoted, legs like donkeys or something. <laughs> but yeah, maybe Tellers can replace Wamba Saka and then that'll be fine. So uh, yeah, that's that's it at the moment. Who knows?